Okay, interesting announcements this week from AMD. Um, Alex, let's talk about the dense geometry format because uh, right. first thing I said to you in our in our Slack was basically, oh, okay, I guess this is AMD's take on RTX Mega Geometry, which was a sentiment which a lot of people um, on social media picked up on and thought, okay, but that's not actually the case, is it? No, it isn't actually the case necessarily. So they're both coming at the issue in similar in, in there's a problem basically what do you do with games that have a lot more triangles nowadays than they did in the past and specifically they really are looking at ue5 and how it has a lot a lot more triangles potentially than games of the of the past and um RTX Mega Geometry's take on this is okay we know that they're splitting up these they're heavily instancing aspects of of the, the visual geometry there and they're also splitting them up into tinier well not tinier but larger gross units of clusters and if we can stream in clusters for the ray tracing structure much in the same way they stream in the clusters for the rasterization aspect then we can make big wins in how in the granularity of the build times that are occurring for ray tracing the build times of the the individual acceleration structures because otherwise when there would be a tiny little cluster that would change on a very large model due to the camera moving all the time uh, or the distance to the model changing which is how nanite works it's constantly switch switching in these new clusters well then uh it would only be building a smaller portion of that. That was the C last, the cl cluster level acceleration structure. And there's also other aspects of the RTX Mega Geometry API that it handle like large scale instancing that are interesting, which also fit really well actually into things that Nanite are doing. Um, DGF is actually, I would almost call that complementary to what we are seeing in RTX Mega Geometry. I don't think they actually are mutually exclusive at, as far as my understanding is. DGF is saying, well, okay, to build these uh, acceleration structures, we are currently inputting uncompressed geometry. You can actually compress geometry, um, but GPUs really haven't been doing that. Um, and we've been dealing with, un we've been dealing with compressed textures for so long, but, text but geometry itself hasn't required compression. Uh, to the same degree, um, but that can actually that that one disk size, VRAM size, um, as th well as throughput of the geometry would be greatly enhanced if it could be compressed and uh, decoded uh, for the ray tracing structure. The thing is that that is essentially their proposal. And they brought out a Vulkan extension to allow this. And this should decrease build time. It's kind of like, it's like, imagine a big pipeline. And if you could imagine it, like where there's a big model at one end, and then you have the ray tracing at the under, other end occurring. Uh, AMD is tackling it at this the front point of this pipeline, saying, oh, well, let's throw in less or more compressed geometry that has a similar quality level visually. And uh, NVIDIA is saying, well, actually, let's attack it right here and start doing builds in a more granular way. And I actually think they could supplement each other in time with an architecture that would support both of them, um, which is wholly possible in the future. The So they aren't actually competing technologies, but the competitive aspect of this is that the only people who've been working on this are AMD, of course, right? It's, I don't think Intel and NVIDIA have um, a open spec compression format that they have that would be compatible with this at the moment and that they would want to give out and that they thought about giving out even. And uh, as a result, AMD coming in with this and how it we saw, we just talked about PS6. We, we've been talking about the next-gen Xbox. The chances are very high that those systems will support it. In, in fact, if you look at the Vulkan uh, on the GPU Open website, the blog they put out, they do say support for future architectures. Right now, the, uh, the, um, the extension for Vulkan that they did put out, they have a screenshot of it. It's running on a 7900 XDX in the screenshot. Uh, that's not because it supports it in hardware, rather that is the kind of the software implementation of the idea. And it may not be completely real-time performant and useful for a game right now, but you can start getting your hands on it and working with it. 
which is a really good a good thing for the future of rendering. Um, my personal take on this is that I want to see AMD pushing for better RT performance. I want to see the industry thinking about these things. But at the same time, I'm a little bit worried about like format wars and I'm a little bit worried about like a slight, uh, I don't know how to say, stifle of innovation that could occur potentially as a result of a format being adopted before all the other vendors try out something uh, in their own right. Um, just because I always think about the original DXR uh, spec, which I think has seen a lot of complaints from developers in the fact that it is very black boxy and uh, less flexible than other aspects of the rendering that you can do on GPUs. But at the same time, that very broad and somewhat limited specification from the developer point of view allowed the uh, hardware uh, vendors, Intel, AMD, and NVIDIA to broad to do some really intense innovation behind the scenes and come up with different solutions to similar problems and like re requiring all of a sudden a, a specific geometry format i don't know if that is the best way to take direct x forward necessarily but it could be really great way to get acceleration on the console side of things where they already have these proprietary formats and they're fine with sticking with them. Uh, so I, I, I'm very curious to see what this means for the future of the industry as a whole, whether or not Microsoft says DXR is now going to require DGF in the future, whether or not it actually stays only in console land for a while, because um, it's currently just a Vulkan extension, right? There's a lot of Vulkan extensions that never are uh, brought over to mainline DirectX or even mainline Vulkan. And I'm curious to see how the other vendors react to this because I don't think we would have a situation where um, the the games developers would be shipping two sets of geometry formats for games. I don't see that as currently as a thing that would happen, but who knows? Or maybe if Intel and NVIDIA feel like this is a good thing and their future GPUs should just support DGF because they think it's so worthwhile regardless of any sort of politicking. So mm -hmm. uh, that that is my take on it. Um, I don't know. What do you guys think? <laughs> um, uh, platform wars, obviously, or you know, format wars, isn't that kind of what we've had already with um, NVIDIA essentially taking point on innovation, <laughs> ray tracing? Well, a, a little bit in terms of they might have had some dictation there in the original opening spec of DXR, hence why DXR 1.1 came out. Um, but at the same time, since it was so broad and you could do anything, like they all have their own proprietary uh, BVH formats, the only thing that is really required is the, the the API itself, how the rays are accelerated, how the BVH is built, accelerated or not. Intel even added in like uh, ray sorting and binning, et cetera, ray sorting uh, without any explicit support of SER, for example. There's a lot of things that could be done within that spec that I thought was actually kind of brilliant for at least a beginning part of a new way to do rendering. And I, I actually liked the fact that it was kind of brought open. Uh, but yeah, it, it's always kind of there in the background. The, these IHVs are probably always fighting over these little little intri intricacies. But I always feel like, I mean, maybe we're at that part where actually the, the industry decides kind of like USB and USB-C, like, <laughs> let's stop this and let's just rally around a format, you know? Yeah, possibly. It's just the case that I think a lot of NVIDIA's business model is about being at the forefront of this sort of thing. When arguably, maybe it should be Microsoft and DirectX and the consortium <laughs> that should be actually doing that job and isn't. Yeah, uh, mm, I think I think that's a this from my personal opinion. Microsoft's been. I feel it's not so cool. Actually, is that they've been only using their Xbox as a way to drive DirectX forward, and it wasn't that way in the past. You know, like you look mm. at like the the two thousand six to two thousand. Well, just anything up until around 2011 and it kind of the driving forward area of DirectX was the PC environment. And then as soon as they really only started working with AMD in that aspect, uh, it kind of became more like the new Xbox is the things that make actually uh, functionality occur into DirectX. Because, you know, we had DirectX Ultimate, which was basically a codification of the things that the Series X and Series S could do. Um, so, yeah. Interesting. 
Yeah, I mean, it's again, we're still in that sort of Wild West period where everything's up for grabs as we move into this sort of new paradigm for, for game graphics. It's, it's, it's hugely exciting, but it's, it's very difficult to keep up with. But, um, well, what can I say? Interesting stuff. Any thoughts on this, Oliver? I think this is a really good standard to adopt for next generation console hardware because it helps with a number of constraints you see on the console side. Like it kind of feels very much like a, a, a piece of technology that's very useful there because it could help a lot with memory bandwidth. And when we're talking about like 192 bit memory buses, a narrower memory bus, you know, a big increase in, in the speed of the individual memory modules, but still not a, not a very wide architecture. This could certainly help there. It could help with getting more efficient use out of memory because we're probably not talking about a huge increase, huge multiple increase over the size of the uh, overall memory pool in the next generation consoles. We're probably talking right. about something more like a 50% bump, maybe at most a 100% bump, not a gigantic increase, probably closer to that lower bound 50% uh, bump there at 24 gigabytes or so. We're talking about uh, better, obviously much better performance in scenes with very complex uh, ray tracing, better performance in scenes that um, involve a lot of very high, highly complex, very complex assets that might be designed primarily for PCs for higher end parts might scale better to consoles here than the uh, prior models would have scaled in uh, in last generation console software. So I think there's a lot of uh, elements of this that could really be quite helpful for next generation consoles. And I think this is kind of the one of the bedrock technologies that might define the next generation of console titles uh, in the end here. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Um, I've got nothing more to add to that. I think you guys have covered out pretty, pretty well. I just think it's really interesting that, uh, you know, obviously the sort of initial takeaway, it's like, okay, it's another attempt to catch up to what NVIDIA is doing with, you know, it's publicized technologies, but there is actually more to the story. I think that's pretty great. It's kind of what yeah. we want to see at this point, because, you know, you always sort of look to NVIDIA to, to, to see, you know, the big things that are happening next, but it's great to see AMD taking point on this stuff as well. Yeah, that, that's that's another take I would have at this, where with, with something like DGF, I think for a long period of time, AMD was just kind of like just doing the bare minimum almost from the outward perspective to support future technologies. And this is actually a direct attack at what the future is saying. It's saying like, actually, we're going to allow you to ray trace all that nanite geometry in real time. Um, maybe not right now, but in the future. And they're actually coming at the problem in a way that is different than the other vendors potentially would have come at it. So that is innovation in its own right and definitely requires applause. It's, it's actually a really cool idea.